So I guess you guys saw the thumbnail and you thought to yourself, I guess the migrants in Chicago are about to be evicted. That's true. However, the problem is nobody seems to know where the migrants are going to be going. I got a pretty good idea exactly where they're going, but let's get to the news. It has been more than a week now since Chicago began evicting migrants from shelters. Today, some aldermen want daily updates on the number of people forced to leave. Terrence Lee at the live desk with more on today's vote. Scott, and on the Immigrant and Refugee Rights Committee passed an ordinance to make migrant shelter eviction data more accessible. Now, if the full council passes this measure next month, DCFS will provide a daily report on the number of new arrivals and asylum seekers evicted or removed from city shelters. Then that information will be posted online. The committee also wants to make sure the 60-day shelter limit policy is being followed. Some migrants are being allowed to stay longer for different reasons. Alderman Andre Vasquez thinks the new rule will give a better picture of the situation. Based on particular cases, being able to speak to accommodations and exceptions that are being made is also helpful in understanding the process and seeing on average like how long folks are staying in the shelter uh, with those extensions. So I think painting a better picture of clarity about what's being done is most helpful. And in the absence of it, a lot of narrative is created that doesn't speak to the good work being done. Um, so we think there's a value in, in knowing that as well. Right now, there are more than 10,300 migrants in 23 shelters across the city. And since 2022, Chicago has received more than 37,900 new arrivals. This one is going to be a very, very, very confusing one. But bear with me, guys, because trust me, it will make sense in the very end once you get all the news, not just the news that's being reported, but also the news that was reported two months ago about the situation. 37,000. I'm pretty sure it's probably going to increase a little bit more uh, as we get closer into the summer. But then again, though, seeing how it is an election year, it's possible that the corroded old person that's in office uh, just may say, you know what, close the border, get some additional votes, yada, 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 yada. The normal type stuff that a Democrat incumbent president, of course, somebody who's an extension from the Obama administration, would actually do but we'll cover that aspect as well in this channel too so that way you guys can get an idea of exactly what's going on still that right there being said i'm pretty sure that a lot of voters or at least most voters around the country especially those who live in chicago uh they're probably not going to be as forgiving by the time i get done with this but of course it could also lead to a ripple effect in other places like i said we got a lot to talk about in a very very short amount of time so let's get to it Really quick, before we get started, I want you to know right now that this right here is one of those good old-fashioned prediction videos where I think it's probably going to happen, and I'm pretty sure that I'm probably going to be following up on it again in about two weeks. But seeing how it is that the migrant crisis has been going on since 2022, I think it's time people realize that, uh, yeah, at some point in time, they were going to begin to get moved. Now, you're probably thinking to yourself that they'll probably get moved to, oh, I don't know, surrounding states, surrounding suburban neighborhoods, surrounding small towns. And if you think that, you'd probably be right. But let me explain to you guys over the course of this video exactly what is going on. Now, seeing how it is that you saw the very first news report, you probably think to yourself, okay, so I guess these people finally made a decision. It's a decision that's obviously been pending for a very long time, but once again, the concern then becomes where do these people go? And given the fact that we recently had a measles outbreak not too long ago in the city of Chicago, it's making people wonder exactly how this entire situation is going to be handled. But once again, we got to go back in time and look at the previous news reports to see exactly where we're going Today with this. on migrant evictions, Chicago aldermen are asking for information about exactly who's being moved and why. Roseanne has details. Amid recent reports that migrants are being relocated from some of the Chicago Park District facilities where they have been temporarily housed, the Committee on Immigrant and Refugee Rights is actually voting today on an ordinance that would provide more data about some of these migrants. Now, the ordinance would require the Department of Family and Support Services to track certain data and provide a daily report of the total new arrivals and asylum seekers to be evicted or removed from those shelters operated in the city. Alderman Andre Vasquez says it will offer the city a better look at the broader picture. We want to get an understanding of what is actually occurring. Um, so we're asking for when it comes to the shelter exit reporting as far as daily reporting uh, is the number of exits total and per shelter um, for each of the folks who are exiting from the shelter 
to also have information on age, gender, uh, the t amount of time in shelter. The Park District announced earlier this week that these migrants are being moved from five different Park District facilities so that they can have a return of their school programs, summer camps, and fitness centers. Now, Alderman Ray Lopez was among those who said he supports that decision, but thinks this is an opportunity for a broader conversation on the migrant issue in Chicago. Rose Gee, I just, I hope that somehow or another these migrants just don't get recirculated, like, uh, to the landing zone where they actually came in at. I mean, yeah, you're going to be sending some of these people to neighboring states, which, of course, we kind of warned everybody about. But still, at the same time, though, some of these people are just probably going to end up right back at the landing zone where they're just going to be then recirculated right back over to those neighborhoods. It makes it almost look like it was a completely fruitless effort, but don't worry, we'll entertain this a little bit more. So the city of Chicago has been trying to figure out exactly what they're going to do. Some migrants, of course, came here by themselves with their own militia, uh, their own volition. As a matter of fact, pretty much all of them did. But of course, the thing is this right here. You've obviously got single, single male, single women. You've obviously got those who've got families, all that type of stuff there. Now, I have been very, very adamant in saying this, and I'll continue to be very, very adamant in saying this, that if you actually had a border wall, an actual honest-to-God true border wall, meaning it would be double-stacked, uh, and of course the Texas National Guard is once again trying to re-secure the border, basically telling the uh, Supreme Court to go to hell, even though the Supreme Court did kind of side with them in a recent ruling, but then they turned right back around and made it extremely murky. It's an extremely confusing thing to discuss. I'll leave links in the description box because even I actually don't get it because the Supreme Court said says that they can arrest illegals, send them back, but then it also says that they can't put up a border wall or a barrier. But still, though, Greg Abbott is obviously defying this, which, by the way, spits in the face of something that Eric Adams said the other day, that uh, obviously it looks like uh, the state of Texas is getting tired of sending illegals out there trying to actually secure our border. But still, though, that does leave Arizona, where you've got an extremely left-wing governor there. This also leaves the state of California, where you have an extremely left-wing governor. This also leaves the state of New Mexico, where you have an extremely left-wing governor as well. I don't think I need to go too far into it, but it doesn't look like this entire situation has actually ended. As a matter of fact, I think it's uh, probably going to pick up, because for the most part, these migrants have been going to very, very big blue cities. But now they're being moved. It's going to start with singles. It's going to start with military age males. It's going to start with those guys there. And once again, like always, these people are not getting vetted. But something is really, really odd, too. Didn't the city of Chicago recently have a measles outbreak? Oh, yeah, that's why I did a video on this. It makes you wonder exactly what's going to happen. But given the fact that these people are saying, look, uh, you need to have a, um, a vaccine, of course, to go anywhere, it's probably going to complicate things. But remember what I just said about migrants being distributed all over the place, because that's going to come back up here very, very soon. You see, what they're not telling you is that while the overall end game and some of these migrants are going to be exported pretty much throughout the entire country. Of course, we did do a video on Tyson Farms and how it is that uh, the Tyson pork plant in Iowa, they are going to be, uh, how do I say this? They're going to be laying off pretty much all their workers and bringing the illegals. What I did not tell you, however, is that a lot of these migrants are still going to be going to the landing zone, meaning that they're just going to be uh, recirculated back through more and more and more. We'll get to that here in a second. But here's the thing about the landing zone. The landing zone is where these migrants are dropped off at, okay? From there, they go to different camps. They go to different areas. And of course, you obviously heard that certain, certain places are obviously getting these migrants out, certain neighborhoods, certain shelters, because of obviously the parks, because kids have got to go back to school. Kids have got to get back on programs. By the way, Think about how much time these children have actually missed. But of course, this has actually been talked about for a while. So it makes you wonder, seeing how it is that a lot of these migrants are just simply going back to the landing zone, it makes you wonder if these people are not just going to be, how do I say, recirculated back into the process. Meaning that while they're spitting some of these people out, while they're sending them to Iowa, while they're sending some of them to Minnesota, while they're sending some of these people to Wisconsin and certain other areas where they're obviously going to get jobs, jobs that they probably should not get, it also means that some are obviously going to stay in the city of Chicago. Maybe the city of Chicago said, look, you know, maybe we finally have a cap. Maybe we finally have a number of which we can contain, a number that we can pay for. By the way, the people paying for that is actually the taxpayer, uh, not uh, the politicians, but the actual PACs. You know, not the people like the Hollywood celebrities who said bring them all in. The people who actually live in the city of Chicago. You know, it's even some of those ones who can't leave, the ones who don't have enough money to leave. 
or the uh, black residents that are getting replaced. I mean, it looks good on the surface that some of these migrants, of course, are getting evicted. But let's just go ahead and be honest. A lot of these migrants are going to be just be getting sent to uh, surrounding other areas. Ohio, Naperville, Indiana, throughout the rest of Illinois, Michigan. I mean, it is an election year. We need those votes. Is obviously what the Democrat president is probably saying. The Democratic Party is definitely saying that behind closed doors, but not out loud. But then again, though, when the answer is so pretty daggone obviously in front of you, you kind of can't help but miss it. But let's watch a little bit City more. City planning to start moving migrants out of the Park District buildings. They're hoping to reopen those buildings for the public by summer. CBS 2's Assal Rizai is live right now from the designated landing zone at Desplaines and Polk with more on where that leaves asylum seekers now. Yeah, Suzanne, there's a total of about 750 migrants at Park District locations. It's unclear right now exactly where they will be moved to, but we know it's a process that is supposed to start today. Field houses at Park Districts across the city are going to see those relocations. We're told at Brands Park, Broadway Armory Park, Gage Park, Leon Park, and at Piotrowski Park all being cleared out. City leaders plan to renovate the spaces and reinstate full summer programming. The mayor ensuring park spaces are not a part of an involving contingency plan to provide shelter for asylum seekers. In the event that Chicago sees another surge of migrant buses from Texas, we know many parents across the city have been voicing their need of these park spaces since the crisis began in 2022. And there are conflicting reports at this time about exactly uh, when everybody will be moved out of those field houses, Suzanne, whether it's happening today or if it's a process that will take a few days. We're waiting for a response on that exact timeline from the mayor's office. We'll bring you an update. Just conflicting soon. reports, but conflicting reports after you've given people the initial report tells me that uh, there's obviously more crap to come. But uh, as I've talked about on several occasions with the food issue, now the measles issue, the evictions, the cold, the crime, all that type of stuff there, I, I wonder what actually pushed uh, this situation. But then again, though, like I said before, it's also still a bit of a confusing situation because you find out when you actually look into it, and I talked about this before, that uh, some of these people will, of course, just go right back to the landing zone where they'll refuse to get poked, or maybe they will get poked. And, of course, they'll just end up right back in the same neighborhood. I wonder when that's going to occur. Maybe it'll occur sometime, uh, I don't know, maybe during the fall when somebody decides to lean more into the uh, progressive style of uh, campaigning, meaning that you're paying to progressives and say, look, we're letting these people in. But, of course, progressives don't seem to understand that uh, these migrants are also coming to take their potential jobs. But then again, though, a lot of progressives obviously don't work, don't actually have an actual literal job. But still, at the same time, though, this obviously is the case. But I did tell you guys before in a previous video that this plan of one-party rule would, in fact, backfire. I'll leave that video in the description box. I know that this video right here is kind of wonky. It's a little bit confusing. But still, at the same time, when you actually look into the situation, you're finding out that, once again, they're just being moved to the areas of people who, quite frankly, didn't want them there to begin with. But let's look at this older news report that came out roughly a month ago where this entire decision or the decision that was made to finally evict said migrants or the decision that was being made to evict the migrants. Let's take a look at that news report because I think that right there is the most telling and probably also the most correct Shelters as well. This weekend is altered as city officials plead for help from the federal government with this migrant crisis. As new arrivals are eager for donated food and clothes, there is news that the city is pushing back its plan for most shelter evictions this weekend. Maria Perez with Southwest Collective is at the Halstead shelter most days giving out food and supplies. And I think this is a good call right now for them. Um, in order for them to get more situated. To date, city officials so did a virtual kind of briefing announcing changes to its policy, children. which would allow more than 2,000 new arrivals to stay at shelters through April, and those with children could stay until June to have consistency for kids in school. This decision prioritizes bed availability for pa families with children currently in shelter and aims to minimize disrupt disruption for the duration of the school year. In the okay, so obviously there's going to be a, uh, let's just say, a priority on certain individuals. Obviously, families can't just up and get up and move. But, of course, at the same time, like I said before, 
a border wall could have prevented this entire situation. This way, it was roughly two months ago, and they obviously wanted to take care of this for the duration of the school year. But as you guys can see, it obviously took a couple of months for these people to actually get things done. Like I said, the one that you just watched, which by the way, we're not finished with, of course, that right there was roughly two months ago, basically telling you that it obviously takes time to move these people, even though they obviously plan on moving these people to Midwestern areas to take certain jobs. Plant jobs, things like that, they're kind of like what happened with uh, Tyson Farms, of course, you know, the Tyson Port Plant in Iowa that we discussed a couple of weeks ago. Obviously, this fire also includes jobs like, I don't know, like steel, mining, things of that nature there. Blue-collar jobs that people are going to need, blue-collar jobs that people have. This is obviously going to be a problem, but you've also got to worry about the situation of people not actually assimilating into society. Now, I know what you're thinking. These people may have already assimilated somewhat into American society of uh, bull crap. Most of these migrants have been with only uh, really just a couple of different nationalities at the best, meaning Venezuelan, probably Mexican, and maybe somebody else from Central America maybe Nicaragua or El Salvador, who the hell knows. But still, at the same time, though, these people aren't going to be assimilating into American society. If anything, they're going to be creating their own little neighborhoods within the cities they live. And, of course, we got to get back to the whole measles issue because that will, of course, come back up. But like I said before, you're probably wondering right now how it was that the federal government, who, by the way, has not been in uh, direct contact with the city of Chicago or the mayor of the city council over the situation, you're probably asking yourself what... Uh, what the holdup was. Well, obviously, it was this recent round of budgetary stuff, which, of course, I would not give these people an absolute dime. I'm not talking about the migrants. Of course, I wouldn't give them a dime either, but I wouldn't give the city of Chicago a dime at all to fix this problem, especially seeing how it is that it was obviously cities like Chicago and New York who said, we're sanctuary cities. We can take these people in. Go ahead and bring these people over here. We'll take care of them so that way we can use them in the census uh, maybe uh, five or six years from now. Well, six to seven years from now when the census changes, hoping that these people will, of course, get a, uh, how do I say this, um, immigrants, of course, that will be legalized. But, of course, I'll be explaining in video uh, number four, which, uh, by the way, will be out on Thursday. I'm calling it number four because it's number four down the list, but I'm going to go ahead and buff it on up. It'll be coming out on Thursday, kind of explaining what the overall outlook is going to be, especially given the Israeli-Gaza conflict. We've got way too many things on our hands right now, and obviously the city of Chicago has said, you know, we're going to send these migrants uh, to these other states, these other areas. Of course, we're also going to send these migrants to other neighborhoods. We're going to get them out of our parks. But then again, at the same time, though, they're also sending them to the landing zone as well, which we talk about here more, more in a second, just to simply get recycled and sent right back doesn't make a whole lot of sense. The five staying in shelters would be evicted on Sunday. And if they were still without housing, they could start the process again by going to the city's landing site. And that would be the process for anyone evicted from a city shelter to start over at the landing site to apply for a spot at a city shelter. But right now, the process is that individuals will go back to the landing zone uh, and they will reapply for a shelter through that process. More than ever, we absolutely need federal intervention and resources because this is not a sustainable operation at the municipal. Sending them back to reapply. I mean, you could just send them home, but of course, we don't want to do that. After where most households include children and would be able to stay through the school year, we met Rosa, who didn't want to be identified. She tells us trying to get first and last month, Brent, is difficult in order to move out. And in the meantime, they haven't been told anything about the extension to stay. Those coming through the landing site will have to prove they have measles vaccination or take an MMR vaccine in order to get placement in a city shelter. In the meantime, those who work with the new arrivals and Venezuelans we've spoken with say what is really needed are work permits so that new arrivals can begin to provide. So the goal is to send these migrants pretty much throughout all of Illinois, all, the, all throughout all the Midwest, and of course to send some back to the landing zone or the loading zone, whichever one you might want to call it, to reapply just to simply come back. Basically what it is that they're shifting the burden over to another spot until a good portion of them end up coming back. 
The point is this right here, there are way too many migrants is what it is. I know it took me a long time to get to it. I said it was going to be a very, very confusing and wonky video. The point of the matter is, obviously, these people can't process these people in. You heard at the very, very beginning of the video, it was over 30,000 migrants that had been sitting in the city of Chicago. They can't process these people. They can't do anything with them. So they're slowly but surely getting them out where they can. Some, of course, are going to neighboring states. Some of these are going to also neighboring areas to where they'll actually take advantage of somebody else's job. Of course, some of them will go to other areas where they will not assimilate. And, of course, if you watch my recent video on the squatter situation in Atlanta, you already know that some of these people intend on actually squatting on people's property, therefore stealing people's property, and therefore going through the process, mostly in liberal areas, because liberal areas typically tend to have very, very liberal-leaning judges who will side with them. And, of course, the laws are already in their favor, even if they're a migrant, because they're all a bunch of bleeding hearts with extremely bad liberal sensibilities. I mean, the situation just get a lot worse, especially on that state's tax rate. But then again, that's obviously their fault, too. I'm just here to tell you, just, just, just simply say, we told you so. And then on top of that, you've also got those who are going to the landing zone where they got to reapply, wait there, get more taxpayer food, uh, more taxpayer expenditure. Of course, the summer is coming. And of course, uh, you're not going to have the ability to wash, to bathe or whatnot. And of course, this virus is going to create a lot of other problems as well, being sent right back to these areas sometime this summer. Let me tell you what the hell is going to happen. I've been saying for a while that this situation was going to get much, much worse because obviously as the weather changes and when people are outside, when food begins to become, begins to get lacking, even if you start removing some of the migrants and sending them to certain areas or even the areas that will take them, after a while, those who are left behind are still going to have to deal with the incoming populace or the populace that already lives there. You know, the populace that's having their jobs taken away from them, the populace that's having their benefits taken away from them. Look, if you really and truly want to agitate a situation, all you got to do is just get the other side completely and totally riled up. And let me explain how I I've talked that. about those voters, those people who live in those areas who are not Hispanic. They're not white. Of course, YouTube decided to monetize the previous videos going through the review process. I got to obvious, obviously watch my language while I'm posting this video. The thing is this right here. Those voters, of course, have been the most angry or what? Voters of color. Black voters, the ones who've been upset, they see the migrants coming in. They see the migrants also getting certain benefits, certain opportunities that these people think belong to them. They see this type of thing. They see what the hell is going on. And therefore, they've obviously been upset about this entire situation. But if you really and truly want to get the crowd riled up, do a good old fashioned half measure, meaning we'll get five or six of them out rather than the overall 30. Oh, these five over here, they'll, 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 they'll go over there to the landing zone. To, to the loading area. That right there's where they'll go and they'll sit there. And of course, they'll just come right back on in when nobody notices. Of course, they'll notice it later on that this person is back. I thought we got, we got rid of these people. I thought we got out there. If you really and truly want to make this crowd angry, all you got to do is just slow walk things. If you actually slow walk the process, they're going to get more and more angry because they're going to get more and more agitated that you're not moving fast enough. The best thing you could have done was build a wall. The best thing you could do is instead of sending these people back to the loading area is send these people back south of the border. Not because I'm saying they need to go back, even though you guys already know my stance. I'm saying this because if this continues to circulate, the situation is only going to get worse. And after a while, possible outbreaks of violence and possible outbreaks of, uh, and obviously with the measles situation, it's obviously going to get a lot worse. So what do I think is going to happen? I think this entire situation is going to get worse because it's going to continue to bleed the taxpayer drier and drier and drier. It's also going to continue to be a strain on those who live in the area. And of course, anger and jealousy is going to become much, much worse, especially when you have the Democratic National Convention, which is scheduled to be in Chicago uh, this year. And uh, you've already got enough uh, people who are going to be outside, who are going to be angry, who are going to be protesting. I have a, have a feeling that this entire situation could get a lot worse especially given the fact that now you have socialist-style food deserts in the city of Chicago and you got businesses leaving. The migrant crisis obviously makes things a lot worse, but of course you probably should never take these people in to begin with. So while evicting these people does look good as a good start, at the end of the day, we already know what the hell is going to end up happening. These people are just going to end up going to other places, taking jobs from them, and it's going to become their problem because the Biden administration obviously wanted to go for one-party rule. But to those who obviously did not get to go over there, those who obviously are stuck in Chicago, it's only going to get worse for them because the people who've got to live beside them, the people who quite frankly have been replaced, people who've had to shut down everything for their benefit, they're seeing these people come right back and they're only going to get angry thinking that the city uh, did exactly what we thought they were going to do, what we asked them to do, what we requested them to do, what we screamed and hollered at them to do, 
when these people just come rolling right back into the neighborhood, then you're really going to see people get mad. Guys, please tell me what you think in the comment section. This one here is going to be the second video that's going to come out on Wednesday. On Thursday, video number four, which is what I'm calling it, is going to be about the situation between Israel and Gaza. It's going to be a relatively lengthy video. It's going to be a relatively sizable one. And of course, we got to ask that question. Are people actually getting red pill because of the situation and because of what's happening back home? Of course, it's kind of a retread of previous videos, but obviously some developments have occurred. It's going to be a lengthy video, but make sure you guys stick around for said video. With that right there being said, though, guys, please hit the like button. Please subscribe. Please share the video. Please sign off in the comment section. I want to get you guys' thoughts. And I'll see you guys later.